Gimna Arroyo, Professor of Art and Printmaking, studied in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Brooklyn, New York. She has an MFA from Yale University. Her work is owned by many galleries, museums, and private collectors, including the Franklin Furness Art Book Collection of the Museum of Modern Art, the Yale Art Gallery, and the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm from Guayama. It's a small town. And um, I used to pass after school by a place that I used to hear the person playing the piano. And I said that one day, one of those wonderful days that you have insight, and I went like, ah, it would be great if I were to learn to play the piano. I went home and asked my father, can I play the piano, please? Can I get lessons? And my father looked at me very seriously <laughs> and said, we can't pay for the piano. Sorry, you can't get the lessons. And I went, OK. That was a reasonable thing. A week passed by, and I passed by another house. And they were teaching people how to draw. And I went like, OK. I went home with my discovery and said to my father, can I have some drawing lessons? And don't tell me that we cannot afford pencil and paper. I define myself as a painter, printmaker that works with clay. And sometimes you wonder, what that means? It simply means that, that I like to think about my concept, about my idea first. And that was the good training at Pratt Institute that they, that I learned that from Pratt, that the most important thing was to think on your concept. And then you figure out what would be the most appropriate container for that, for that concept. And that have never left me. I like to work with different materials. That is the fascination of, work, of being an artist. Being an artist is entering into a process of exploration, of investigation. And if you start and you know exactly how you're going to finish, then why do it? For me, it just I need to be challenged. In general, as a printmaker, I work with either etchings, lithographs, color graphs, and polyester plate lately, lithographs with I making books, and relief printmaking. I do mostly relief because of the facilities. I work uh, oversized prints. I use a full sheet of plywood, half a plywood, three quarters of the plywood, carve it, ink it, put a piece of wonderful satin on top, lately silk. I'm getting fascinated with silk. And it adds a tactile quality to the prints. Uh, these very large prints, I've been doing installations with them, which it opens the world of the whole world for me, because in the past, uh, one experiences the surface of the work. In the installation, you, uh, you enter into the world of the work itself. You're no longer in the picture plane. You are my audience. My is inside of the picture plane, and they're part of the picture plane sometimes. And that's a lot of fun. In the work's legacy and ancestors of the passage, I began like I usually begin my work. I begin first with an idea. I would like to do X, Y, and Z. In this case, from my experience of going to Africa, I wanted to work with something dealing with the Middle Passage. And Middle Passage work is not an easy work. Sometimes you don't want to do it because it's, a, it's painful work. And one of the things that I did to begin to, to get in touch with that was call uh, Professor Stacy Close, a uh, professor here at Eastern in the Art History Department, and asked Stacy, Stacy, I'm looking for the passage. If, you know, I'm looking for uh, the, uh, to work in the Middle Passage. I'm starting to, I won't like to make this heads. I don't know wh how yet, but. I need information. From there, I started making drawings. Start, I usually buy a sketchbook. 
And that sketchbook is exclusively for a project. Every time I have ideas, I go there, make some drawing. I really treat the sketchbook not only an, an, a place for annotations. It's more like a visual journal. I do watercolors, mixed media, just to help me get into. To, I call it trying to seek for the image or the color or the feeling that would get me there. Sometimes I just have an idea and the gestation of that idea, I, have, I seem to be able to identify my cycle. It comes between two, three, and even four years before that idea, I see it into completion. That is not a quick, easy thing. I'm so pleased that I have planted many ideas that there's a nice cycle and a nice rhythm. I had a, a project I was supposed to go to the Czech Republic and bring in some pieces dealing with mythology and a deity of water that deals with indigenous people and African people. And that sounded like a good task. However, I, uh, I found this wonderful book by Lydia Cabreras and it was called Oshun and Jemaja. And when I started thinking about this project, I thought, wow, I would like to get a, the goddess of the sea, a goddess of the river, a tabeira, probably the Mexicans must have several of them, and make a multicultural thing. When I open the book and I read about Jemaja, she was so fascinating, so multifaceted, so rich, that I never left her. I did that whole body of work, which was composed of seven panels and a body of a body of water that was a floor installation it was one of my first floors installations that I began then to work in an installation form when I began to work in that piece and then and the idea of creating the house of spirits las casa de los espíritus and in that piece I already have one of the pieces done which is the house of Jemaja since I was so much into her this other piece emerge. But mythology had enriched my work, my vision.